Tower of London. The tower is used as a palace, fortress, and prison. A priest visits and gives one last chance to renounce the Protestant faith. Refusal means death. This was the beginning of the end for Lady Jane Grey. She was a young girl who held strong to her faith and beliefs, and through everything she stayed close with God, never losing sight of heaven, and knowing in the end she would be with her father in heaven. Some could say she's a martyr and died for what she believed in, and then again others could say she's ignorant for not renouncing the Protestant faith and proclaiming the Catholic faith. Lady Jane never hated her cousin Mary, even though Mary signed the warrant for her arrest and never gave her a fair trial for treason. Jane was almost an innocent bystander, broke into the messed up world of court, fooled by the ties that her husband, parents, and in laws held to her. Jane never wanted to be queen. She had done so many times. She saw the corruption of court and what too much power could do to someone. She did not want the same fate to come to her. But in the end, she did. Jane had a rough life growing up. She created life at home with her parents, especially with her mother. If her mother wasn't happy, then no one was happy. Jane was the oldest of the children in her family, but all her mother saw was a plain girl who lacked prudence and training. Jane was often beat for her mistakes, and at the age of nine, she was sent off to court to live with Queen Catherine Clark. Jane loved her time at court with Queen Catherine. She admired Catherine with the same admiration a child had for their mother. Catherine was the closest thing Jane ever really had to her mother, and they held a strong bond of love and trust. While in court with Queen Catherine, Catherine's husband, King Henry VIII, died, and Catherine was left to mourn. Not long after the death of the king, Catherine was wed to Sir Thomas Seymour, a man she had been, loved with, been in love with for quite some time. Jane grew to love Thomas as she loved Catherine. They helped to make the perfect family that Jane had never had. Jane grew in love and affection for them. Her life was perfect until the death of Catherine. Catherine had died from fevers after childbirth, and the child she had born died shortly after her, where it was a weighed only four pounds and was not healthy. Jane was given the job of chief mourner at Catherine's funeral. She was only 13. A short time after the funeral, Sir Thomas Seymour was arrested for the murder of his wife. Jane went to see the boy King Edward VI to see why she, he had signed the death warrant for Sir Thomas. Edward said he heard the rumors of the poisoning of Catherine and couldn't let Sir Thomas get away with murder. Jane pointed out that people did to the gossip in court, but that still did not have that still did not stop him from having Sir Thomas executed. After the death of Sir Thomas, Jane was sent home to Bradley. Her parents had been launched. While living at home with her parents, Jane was betrothed or engaged to a proper gentleman. Their engagement was broken off when the young man's father was put to death and he lost the ears of the king. After their engagement was broken off, Jane became betrothed yet again to, the, to Gilbert, the son of Northumberland, who had the ears of the king at that time, which meant he could basically get whatever he wanted. Gilbert and Jane did not live together after they were married. Jane lived in a house where she had spent many years with Catherine, and Guilford lived at home with his parents. After living apart for a few months, news came to them that King Edward VI was dead. Mary had escaped to Spain, and Elizabeth was never married. Northumberland informed Jane she was now the queen, because her mother had raised her right to the throne. Jane thanked him and was scolded when she came to, because that was not something the queen would do. All the while this was going on, all Jane could think is, what shall Mary do to me when she finds out, and I am not the true heir to the throne? Jane was coronated a few days after and was the official queen of England. All the while, Jane did not want the throne, but her mother kept telling her to think about the Protestant of lives she would be saving by being the queen. Because if Mary was queen, they would surely be put to death. Jane felt trapped. There was no way out, for now she was queen, and that was that. There would be no turning back now, and only God knew what was in store for her future. Jane was queen for about six days when um, she was in prison. Many thought she would spend her entire imprisonment in the Tower of London, when actually she was kept in the Queen's chambers up until the final day of her imprisonment, and she could be seen walking around in the Queen's gardens. On the day that Jane was supposed to be executed, Guilford asked permission to visit her and say his goodbyes. But Jane refused him, for she was at peace with the Lord, and he needed to find the same peace. For she would not comfort him, nor would she leave his soul at rest. Jane spent the rest of her 
mourning, writing to friends and loved ones. She was preparing for her death and making peace with the Lord. She knew her time was coming soon. Jane had to watch her husband when she had it. His body was carted off with one wagon and his head in another. Jane was next. Jane was taken to the place outside the tower where she was to be beheaded. She asked if she could say a few words and was given permission. She was dying to repeat her song and then began to take the top layer of her dress off. The executioner asked if she needed help and she pleaded no. She tied her hair back and walked the other block. The executioner asked for her forgiveness, but he did not want to kill her, and she willingly forgave him. She tied the strip of cloth around her eyes, bent down, and began to kill her block. When she could not find it, she began to cry out in her and cry to the executioner about to find her wife. He raised his axe, and she heard it whistling through the air. Her world went dark. That was the end for Lady Jane Grey. She died at the young age of 16. After her death, Lord Cumberland and two of his other sons were put to death for trying to take the throne. And James' father was also put to death for helping Jane take the throne. James' mother was right. She was the only thing that was keeping the Protestants alive. Because after her death, Mary Tudor took the throne and innocent people were beheaded and burned at the stake for religious practices. Lady Jane Grey may not have had a few sentences written about her in the history textbooks, and she may not be very well known, but in the end, she really did play an important role in English history.